What's up my friends, Alex here today. I'm gonna to tell you about the, the 10 mortgage limit with Fannie Mae. Somebody on my YouTube from the last uh, video asked, Rajiv, he said, how do you get over the 10 mortgage limit and doesn't this affect you when you do Burr? Yes, it absolutely does. I thought it was fantastic that I got to, you know, make this video about a question that somebody on my YouTube channel actually had. So today I'm gonna to tell you how, a few ways to get around the 10 mortgage limit and I'm gonna tell you my favorite way and how I did it right now. Okay, not right now. First, I'm gonna tell you what it is. The 10 mortgage limit says that if you have 10 financed properties, you cannot get another Fannie Mae mortgage and the details about how that's worded is really important and we're gonna go over it real quick. DU means desktop underwriter and that means that's Fannie Mae's way of automating the underwriting process to make sure that, you know, they take all the guesswork out of it and they, this is why they can, they can funnel people through real quick. You meet these requirements, get the loan, pretty simple. The rules state a few uh, important details. They say your primary residence counts as one of your finance properties. They say that multifamily properties that have a bunch of units in one uh, parcel, like duplexes, triplexes and quadplexes, they also count as one finance property. If you are a co-signer on a loan, that counts as one of your properties. That's gonna matter here in a second. So if you want to burr and you want to do delayed finance like I do, both, then it's not gonna take very long before you get 10 finance properties. So how do you get around it? The most common way that people address this, uh, especially online, is they say, get a commercial mortgage. When you hit your limit, you get a commercial mortgage, you wrap them up into one blanket loan, then you start over. And that is not what the rules state and that may or may not actually work in practice. Because what did I tell you the rule was? The rule wasn't 10 financed uh, mortgages, it was 10 financed properties. And so, you know, I'm not one for advocating for the rules generally, but when the bank goes through your Schedule E on your taxes, it's gonna have all 10 of your properties listed out uh, individually. So even if you wrap them into a commercial loan, they're gonna know you have 10 financed properties that may very well may kill this uh, this approach to solving the problem. Now, if you still want to make it work, what you do is you take all those 10 properties, you wrap up into a commercial loan, and then you take all of your properties off your Schedule E and you wrap them into a single Schedule C on your taxes. That is a ton of work and it's gonna take you a year, uh, or at least a tax filing to do so. And man, that's so much work just to get a Fannie Mae program. There has got to be a better way. In fact, there's three better ways and I'm gonna go over them with you right now. I know I've been saying that three times now. The most common way, I think, is the wife or the husband. So you have 10 properties, then you start putting them in the spouse's name, then they have 10, now you get 20. Now, like, I'm not a mathematician, but you're still gonna have, you know, how do you get to 21? You still have the same problem. So it's a fix, but it also has the same, you know, it has the same built-in limit. You can get 20 now. 20 is a lot but it's a limit and it's to be considered. Also really important to note, as I said earlier, co-signer counts as one finance property. So if you have a primary residence already and your spouse is a co-signer, that means you each have one. Now you're back down, now you're down to nine each. So remember the co-signer counts per user towards your finance property limit. So if you wanna get 10 each, that means you have to have 10 really each, no co-signing. The second best way to solve this is to go commercial for good. So. And the first one, you, the first solution I'd say, you get all those first 10 loans, you wrap them into a commercial mortgage, and then you go off and you get your Fannie, you continue to get your Fannie Mae mortgages. But man, we already discussed how much of a hassle that is. What if you just, you got your first 10 Fannie Mae mortgages and then you went off and get commercial loans from there on out? It's not so hard, but you gotta find a local community bank to do it. No big banks are gonna do that. So that's your, that's the difficult part of that is trying to get single uh, houses under commercial loans each one. Now you could, if you had cash and you could go out and buy three or four and then wrap them into a loan, that's really the way to do it. But in general, the point is, um, the, the second best solution is go all commercial from here on out. Don't get any more Fannie Mae mortgages. Pretty simple. The best way to solve this problem, 10 Fannie Mae mortgage limit, is to stop buying single family homes altogether. That's what I did, that's what I recommend you do. And I know that you're just starting out probably, and you got two or three, and you're like, man, I don't wanna go to a 50 unit, but I'm telling you, by the time you get to 10, you might feel more confident than you thought to go bigger. That's what I did. I only wanted to get 10 houses. I got to eight, and I was like, first, this is boring. Second, it's inefficient to buy one at a time. Third, it doesn't scale. You know, the real value in, in real estate is uh, economies of scale. Bigger means 
it, it, the, it, it's more efficient. So you get 24 units, it's more efficient than 24 singles. If you get a 50, it's more efficient than 50 singles. That's 50 roofs, that's 50 mortgages, 50 tax bills, yada, yada, yada. 50, you know, tr different drives to each one of them. So instead of trying to work around this 10 loan limit, just go to commercial big multifamily altogether. Maybe you're not ready yet, you'd be surprised that you might be ready uh, when the time comes. Either way, start thinking about it now because, well, you don't want 100 single family houses, right? That's insane. Well, what's the number, right? Is it 50? Is it 30? Is it 20? Maybe it's just 10. Maybe the universe is trying to tell you something. 10's enough, then go on to something else. That's the way, I, that's my favorite way to solve it. It's the easiest way. It's the most efficient, it's the most profitable. What's the big problem, man? Just go multifamily and commercial. Easy, easy. Why does the 10 loan limit exist with Fannie Mae in the first place? I'm not really sure, but if I had to take a wild guess, I'd say, look, you're one person. You don't need 11 risk-backed government loans on the taxpayer's dollar all to yourself. Go off and get a commercial loan like a regular business once you get to that size. I mean, it's basically the universe telling you to scale up. It's the government telling you to scale up. It's the rules telling you to scale up. It's the same thing I'm telling you, scale up. Instead of trying to go around the rules, and trust me, I'm an advocate for breaking rules generally, but some of them it's like, eh, it kind of makes sense. And I, in this instance, I sort of agree. I hope this was helpful, Rajiv. I hope this was helpful for you specifically. If you have any other questions that you think I can answer and I can make a YouTube video out of them, I absolutely love it. Please, in the comments, let me know. Let me know if this was uh, helpful and I will see you for the next video. Like and subscribe immediately. Where is it? Right there. There you go.